God had intended for them to be a light unto the Egyptians. But the Egyptians, when they saw them, they saw enemies, people who could turn against them at any point in time. And therefore, God sees, says unto Moses, I have seen and I have heard. I have seen the affliction of my people, and it shall continue no longer. Therefore, Moses, I am sending you to redeem them. And in Exodus chapter 5, verses 1, we see Moses and Aaron approaching Pharaoh, and they say to him, King Pharaoh, the Lord God says, let my people go. I want them to have a feast with me. God had taken care of this, the plight of the Israelites, and he wanted it to end. He wanted their mourning to end. He wanted to have a feast with them in the wilderness. And so, God, with his power, he led the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. And indeed, in the wilderness, and even in the land of Canaan, God had prepared a number of feasts for them. It wasn't one feast, but it was a number of them. One feast that I like is the Feast of, of, of Tabernacles. This was a feast they were to hold in the seventh month. On the fifteenth day, you find that in, in, in Leviticus chapter 23 and in Numbers chapter 29. They were to hold this feast for seven days. And for seven days they would be feasting. There would be offering, offerings, uh, feasts of meat offerings, drink offerings unto the Lord, praising and worshiping God, allowing God to talk to them in a special way. They were going to be feasting for seven days. At this point in time, Jesus is talking to his disciples. His disciples had gone for a mission. He had sent 70 of them into all the cities of Israel, Palestine, and they had preached, they had cast away demons, they had done everything God had given power to them to do. And they come, they come to Jesus and reported, gave, given a good report to say, demons, we were able to cast away the demons. We were able to heal sicknesses. We were able to command evil spirits. And Jesus simply said, what you should rejoice about is that your salvation is sure. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. However, even after this, they could not find rest. Because the Bible says people were coming and going, and the disciples couldn't have a time to rest, not even a time to eat or even to drink water. So Jesus says, mm -mm. come, you yourselves, come with me. Let's go into a desert place and you should, let's, let's have you rest a while. Jesus cared for his disciples, just as he cared for Abraham, just as he cared for the children of Israel in Egypt. He knew their affliction. He knew they enjoyed doing his work. But apart from them doing his work, Jesus also wanted to work with them for their salvation. And he says, come rest a while. And when God calls you to come to rest a while, he calls you for an experience with him. An experience like no other. An experience where he gives you life. An experience where he leads you into his light. God wants us to work for him. He wants us to do everything possible in our, within our power and within the power he has already given us to do everything we can 
to make sure that we work for the salvation of others. But more than that, he's interested in us working with him for our salvation. And so he says, come and rest a while. In my life, of late, I've discovered that my life has been filled with toil. I've toiled a lot. I've been working, sometimes sleeping around 11, 12 at night, to such an extent that sometimes I don't have time to eat, let alone to, to, to pray with my family. And God spoke to me as I was trying to prepare for this sermon to say, come and rest a while. Because sometimes we toil, but we find out that we are not doing much, we are not accomplishing much. We work so much, but accomplishing less. Why? Because we have ignored the call from the Savior to come and rest a while. God wants us to have time with Him. He wants us to have time with Him. He wants us to come and be with Him at a place where we are thinking about nothing about him but Him and our salvation. A, a time where we, 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 we consider, we reflect on our journey, how we have traveled with Him, what we have done and what He wants us to do. He wants us to be with Him and have this special time with Him. Some years ago, uh, I once stood here and preached. It was around this time of the year. And the sermon I preached was entitled, Nyagen Pute. If I am to give a title to this sermon for today, the title was going to be Nyagen Pute Part 2. I remember my mother. It was around this time of the year. And he, she knew camp meeting had come. She knew how painful experiences had taken her down. She knew that the only place where she can find solace for her soul was being with God. At the same time, she knew that my father was very much intolerant of her religion. But she said, but Wabami, I will take this time and go to camp meeting, regardless of what your father is going to say when he comes. Because she knew she was, he was going to come because it was holiday time. So she, she says, put, I am going no matter what. And indeed she went. She didn't mind the consequences of her going. And of course, when my father came, he wasn't amused. He wasn't happy. But we also told him that our mother said, Nyege put, and we made the situation worse. We need to make commitment to say, when God calls us, Nyege put. Sometimes we meet, we, we miss the convocation services because of our toiling, because of our work. But it's time, it's high time, we make a commitment to say, Nyege Mkuti, where God calls, I will be there. May God help us this evening as we make this commitment to say, wherever He calls, where He leads, I will diligently go. Are we making this commitment tonight? Are we making this commitment? Let's raise our hands. Let's say, Megan Putin, by no means will I miss it. Thank you so much. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, we thank you so much this evening for giving us the opportunity to be with you, 
at this special time which you yourself have has prepared for us to meet with you, to listen to your word, to know that you care so much about ourselves and about our salvation. In as much as you care about us doing your work, you also care about us working with you for our salvation and for our peace in this world. May you be with our peace and help us not to forfeit it. This is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen.